I am Anil Kumar sharing with you solutions of questions from GCSE. Now in probability you have basically three types of questions. One you need to solve using tree diagram, the other using set notation, the Venn diagrams and third one using a formula. So in my set of limited videos you will find all the three types of examples. The idea is to provide you with the kind of flavor you should be uh, aware of before taking up this test. The question here is a jar contains two red, one blue and one green bead. Two beads are drawn at random from the jar without replacement. So that's kind of important without replacement. Draw a tree diagram to illustrate all possible outcomes and associated probabilities. Find the probability that a blue bead and a green bead are drawn from the jar, right? So let us carefully look into what we are given, right? So we are given two red. We are given just one blue. And also one green. So what is the total? Whenever we're talking about probability, it is very important to understand what is the total. Right? That is your denominator most of the time. Now, two beads are drawn at random. So what we will assume here is one after the other. So when you're saying two beads are drawn at random, we'll say one after the other. So it involves two steps, right? So in step number one, for example, you could draw either color. So in step number one, let's begin from here. You have uh, three combinations. So you could get a red, you could get a blue or a green, right? Now, since there are two reds, what is the probability of getting a red? So two reds out of four means two out of four, correct? Only one blue means one out of four. And for green also, it should be one out of four. So that part is clear. Now again, you make a second attempt. So when you do the second time, then also you got these possibilities. So what do you get? You get three possibilities once again. Now look here for the nomenclature which we are going to do. Now let us assume that this time we are getting red again, right? We could get red, we could get blue or green also. Let's write down blue and green also. Now what is the probability of getting the second red? Since one red has been already withdrawn, it is without replacement, so we are left with only one red. And one number less means the total now has become three. So this is one over three. Now in the first draw, it was red, not blue or green. So still we have these one each. So their probability is also one over three and one over three. Clear? Now when it comes to blue, then again, you could get any of these combinations, correct? Let me make three and then we'll discuss. So you could get red. Since in the first draw you got one blue, that means we have got two reds here. Two reds out of three, right? So two out of three. Now, can I get blue? Well, I've already got a blue and there was only one blue. So basically that is zero, right? So it is uh, zero over three. There is no possibility of getting blue now since we never replaced it, right? How about green? There is one green, since we have only taken out a blue, in this case, so 1 over 3. Is that clear? Correct? Now let's talk about uh, the green. So here again, now you can realize that you cannot draw green, right? So, so I'll make a small green here. However, we know we could get a 
red or a blue so so we could get red or a blue since we got green the first time there are two reds with us so this probability is 2 over 3 and still one blue 1 out of 3 and for green it is 0 out of 3 correct so I'm not rewriting green but I know that's it so we got our tree diagram with the probabilities so with that we have done the first part kind of we actually should have a combination here also to really complete it so let's look into these combinations also right so okay so here what are we saying we are saying that what is the probability of getting red once we know we already had red that is what we are saying we get red once we know we already have red which is 2 out of 4 times 1 out of 3 is that clear now similarly you can read the others so this is probability of B the blue when we know we already got red right so so here again it is 2 over 4 times 1 over 3 now in this case it is probability of green when we know we got red earlier so we get 2 over 4 for the red and 1 over 3 for the green now in this particular case let me use a different ink now since this is going to be very congested okay so we're talking about probability of red when we know that we got blue earlier is 1 out of 4 times 2 out of 3 now this is 0 so we'll not write this probability of green when we got blue earlier is basically 1 out of 4 times 1 out of 3 in this case we get two probabilities we cannot get green again right so we get probability of red when initially it was green and that is 1 out of 4 times 2 out of 3 the last one here is probability of getting a blue when the first one was green and is 1 out of 4 over 1 out of 3 is that clear so you could always simplify and write a number there but for understanding this is a better format now let's look into what they are asking for part B part B is find the probability that a blue bead and a green bead right so we want blue and a green so either one could be first or second correct that's what we want so in these combinations wherever we have blue and a green so we'll forget about the red line we'll see the blue and the green lines so blue and the green we get this one that is clear right or we could get green first and then blue so the these two right so that is the probability for um, I should say um, blue uh, let me combine them like this or means union green okay so that is what we're trying to figure out so we can just add them up so it is one this one green after blue is one out of 12 and we are going to add blue after green which is also one out of 12 so we get 2 out of 12 or 1 sixth so the probability for this case is 1 out of 6 is that clear to you and that is how we are going to figure it out so I hope that helps now just to sometimes if you have more time actually it is not necessary that you'll get enough time in a test to you know even calculate these values but if you have it is good if you calculate these values but that is not a must okay so with that we should end this video and we'll take up examples where we'll see how Venn diagrams could help us to uh, find probability much simpler way okay thanks for watching and all the best